Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Mining Now. This is a CIM special with Hatch, and we are filming in Montreal at the CIM Connect. We have today Ryan Lafreniere. I probably got that sort of close. Good enough. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the show. Um, so you are a mining engineer with Hatch, correct? Yeah, mining engineer with Hatch. I've been at Hatch about seven years now. Wonderful. Yep. The um, how's the event been so far? The event's been great. I mean, Montreal. I was out a little later than planned last night. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're surviving. It's all good. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the uh, themes we wanted to cover is um, getting into what you're seeing around, uh, like battery electric vehicles with Hatch. Has that been a big? Has that been kind of at the forefront where you're where you're seeing that in, at the company? Yeah. So. Um, very lucky to be um, within Sudbury, where we're seeing a lot of the BVs oh, and implementing the project. Yep. Um, so, yeah, definitely Hatch Sudbury. We're doing a lot in the BV space. I'm actually presenting tomorrow. Okay. Um, a presentation on BV implementation with Valet. Um, I see. Yeah, very, very lucky. Um, been involved with BVs the past four or five years now. Okay. Um, and yeah, so pretty cool space to be in. Is that the so is that the key area of focus for Hatch at this event then as well? Uh, for myself personally, yes. Um, obviously, we're a multidiscipline DPCM, so we have people here from energy, metals, um, processing people. So uh, pretty diverse. But yeah, myself, I'm here mostly around the uh, the BV. Uh, would you be able to elaborate more on like the valet program with with the BVs in in Sudbury? Yeah. So the valet GV program um, is an interesting one because we're trying to implement the this new technology and kind of older brownfield operations, right? Like some of the mines in valet are 100, 100 plus years old. So you're dealing with old infrastructure. Yeah. Um, they're getting deeper, more challenging. There's heat and ventilation constraints. So what we're finding in some cases is even though it's a brownfield operation, there are challenges. There is some economic benefit um, to implementing, you know, some more mostly around the primary haulage equipment, trucks and LHDs to save on vent and cooling requirements. So okay. we're finding some interesting cases that actually make financial sense. So um, there's also the other side of the coin where, you know, there's health and worker health and safety benefits because, you know, the DPMs, reduced uh, heat and noise. Right. Um, so, you know, there's lots of benefits to BEVs. It just really depends on the clients, what, what their goals are, right? Is it ESG? Is it financial? Is it worker health and safety? Obviously, all mining companies care about that. But um, yeah, so depends who you're working for. It varies a little bit. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment. Find, market, and sell surplus and used equipment. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. Orica Digital Solutions seamlessly connects customers' physical and digital world so they can readily understand and optimize operations at every step of the value chain, from exploration to processing. Blast IQ Underground provides quality control and improved underground drill and blast productivity for superior blast outcomes. With the ability to view design, loading, and initiation documents in a central location, BlastIQ provides easy access to historical and key performance indicators that drive continuous improvements, enhance productivity, and reduce the overall cost of operations. To learn more about BlastIQ Underground and how it can support your operations, visit orica.com forward slash BlastIQ Underground. Canem is a leader in steel fabrication and construction, delivering tailored solutions for commercial, industrial, institutional, and multi-residential projects. With 60-plus years of experience, they offer a wide range of products, steel joists, decks, structural steel, prefab building solutions, and more. Backed by expert services in BIM, engineering, and project management. Visit canem.com to learn more. CIM is Canada's leading technical institute dedicated to the sustainability of our industry. Members enjoy professional growth opportunities through CIM libraries, publications, webinars, societies, and the job board. Experience the CIM community firsthand at the Conference of Metallurgists, August 19th to 22nd, ICARD, September 16th to 20th, and the CIM Health and Safety Conference, October 6th to 8th. Visit CIM.org for more information and join CIM today. So they're actually, so you're actually seeing there just to go a bit more into that. So if, if it goes deeper and deeper, it can actually be beneficial to bring on the BEVs for in those, sometimes in those scenarios. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like I'll present on, on Taut and Mine. Um, Thankful Valley has given me permission to talk a bit about their project. So yeah. um, Taut and Mine was a really good example where um, they have a deepening ore body. They're beyond life of design um, and they now have to truck from increased depth and okay. more trucking, more heat, more vent. So they're actually 
going to be event constrained moving forward. So what we found is rather than sinking two new raises from surface for yep. cotton, it made more sense to bring in a few BV trucks and LHDs mm. and continue operation in their deeper portions of their mine with those technologies. So um, made a lot of sense financially for them. So the so that's actually so they're almost like pinpointing like certain areas and that they're like okay actually we can use this technology and it will benefit the uh, benefit the longevity of the mine as it's like beyond like what it was initially scoped for. Yeah, abso- absolutely, and that's something I think we do pretty well um, with hatches. You know, we're not pushing this technology on every operation, right? Every mine's unique mm-hmm. and has its unique challenges, and there is a case that I'll be presenting Tuesday where it really doesn't make sense to to implement BEV. So. Um, yeah, it's really just finding the cases where it does make sense Yeah, and, uh, identifying those and giving it a shot. So the, and then I, I guess another, another area with, with the valet, is there, could you tell me more about like, even like their green energy vehicle program? How is that being implemented? I was more working with valet base metals because there was a transition, but okay. they do have 2030 vision where they're trying to, um, decrease their carbon output. Um, a lot of their larger emitters are their large open pit mines in South America and whatnot, but obviously Sudbury's trying to do their part as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we do have, um, you know, the BV prime movers, but they also are trying, you know, BV service equipment, uh, personnel carriers. So they're, they're definitely, um, I would say they're, they're probably leading one of the leaders in that space. Okay. Yeah. The, when, when you go around and on like, so for hatch, you already mentioned like it's different for each mine. What are... What are tools that you use to help these different clients evaluate? Obviously, you've mentioned valet, but like, and we don't want to mention other names, obviously, for confidentiality. But what are the tools that you use to evaluate what if this can be implemented? If it's if it's a it's if it's a use case that's good to use. Yeah, so we use we do a lot of vent and heat modeling using vent sim. So that's our ventilation team. Um, okay, they, they do a very good job. Um, an early phase study will do you know Excel based. Um, calculations, but we also do dynamic simulation modeling. So we mm-hmm. use tools like Arena. Um, we have an Automod program, um, and then we use dynamic simulation to further evaluate because there is there is a bit of a change moving to BEVs with the charging and battery swapping. So I've heard of that being a cha- like can be quite a challenge at times. Definitely is, yeah. So you can see a decrease. You know, the gear does travel faster, but ultimately, if you have to swap a battery every couple cycles, you're losing 20 minutes. It does does impact productivity. So mm-hmm. you just want to make sure that you're buying the correct fleet right amount of gear right and, uh, you're going to still achieve throughput so obviously when hatch is is evaluating these tools you're, you i would imagine you're agnostic on the equipment but you can kind of go through evaluate what's out there what's in the market and then pr- provide to that operator uh recommendations on what you would see as a good fit for their specific mind yeah absolutely vendor agnostic is is key i mean there's not a lot of um available equipment currently so you are a little limited into what you can purchase and you know dealing with where i've mostly been dealing is brownfield assets i mean green, greenfield you can design you're starting fresh right so you can design your drift sizes you can plan your electrical infrastructure right your ventilation is all designed for bvs brownfield is a little more challenging right mm-hmm. so like in the valley operations we're we're um, restricted by dimension sizes so you know, okay. some of these mines that are hauling uphill, it'd be nice to put a trolley system in. Yeah. But you can't you can't go in and slash the drift. Well, I guess you could. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So Yeah, because that's a big thing with the trolley systems, too, if you've got that implemented because you've got the grade to deal with and all that, right? So if you've already got an existing infrastructure like Brownfield, you can't really just, like, put in, like, start bulldozing a new grade. Yeah, you don't have the space often, right? So, yeah. Um, Greenfield's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, Brownfield is a little more challenging. Do you see in the Greenfield side, just to touch on that a little bit, do you see with that a opportunity, like, is that being incorporated a lot, like the BEVs as well? Are you seeing that quite a bit on those new plans? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, lots of companies are pushing for it, at least to investigate it, right? I think basically every study we're doing now involves some sort of BEV component um, okay. to where it makes sense. I wouldn't say they're all investing it. There are there are sites, you know, like diesel LNG powered sites that it doesn't make yep. a lot of sense because yep. you're just powering electric vehicles with diesel. Mm-hmm. Although there is, the, you know, the underground worker health and safety benefits. Right. Um, but yeah, it doesn't always make sense, but we are, I'd say we're studying it. We're looking at it on most of our studies now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. The, the, I guess, I guess um, before we wrap up, the, is there, uh, is there any other key parts like what, even with like with your Hatch's messaging and what you're presenting around that? that kind of stand out that or even like um what your feet your feedback is from uh, uh clients around this in the mining space 
Yeah, the feedback is well. Everyone's pretty excited about it, right? It's it's definitely the buzz of all these these conferences. So I would say the feedback is definitely excited. They want to make sure they check the boxes because there obviously are risks. Um, yeah, with every new technology. So I'd say I'd say excited is a, a good word for it. How long? Actually, um, a little bit of a sidetrack. For BEVs, how long has the technology been in place now for mines? Like, how long has have they been able to implement it in in certain situations? Do you know? Well. Actually, the trolley system has been around for a while. I think Valet yes. is probably the the first operations. True. They have Creighton and and Coleman Mine in Sudbury that operate the Pentagraph system. So it's 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 Pentagraph with a diesel engine, but it's still electrification. Um, yeah. So it's been around for a while. Oh yeah. I'd say the past you know three or four years, it's really picked up a lot of steam, and you're seeing uh, more and more of it underground. Yeah. So that's um, obviously it, it's great having you on with Hatch. I mean, very well known. Very no, well-known company and I've been a part of CIM for a long time. Um, so thank you, Ryan, for joining. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for watching Mining Now. Uh, this, again, is a CIM special. And uh, we will link for Ryan's information and, of course, for Hatches. Please subscribe, follow. And uh, until next time, we'll see you on Mining Now. <laughs>